Hey everybody, I wanted to do a brief video on some basic taiko techniques, Japanese art form that invo basically involves uh, martial arts and drumming. It's a very visual art form and there's some videos out there but not too much explaining the gist of um, how you could get started in a typical program uh, from, you know, elementary all the way up through college to create some kind of taiko ensemble. Um, the first thing you need to know is it's a very visual, very, very visual art form. Um, in other words, I wouldn't want to pop in a CD all the time and listen to taiko drumming. I would want to more or less see it because it's the visual atmosphere or the visual entity that really makes it great. Second thing is, is there's a couple basic instruments that you could purchase or create um, based on different funds, whatever you have, to create drums. What I have in front of me are uh, some of the Remo Taiko drums that are the Remo Adaikos, which basically just means big drum, and they come in all different sizes. You can get huge ones or you can get small ones. Um, the one that's in front of me here is relatively large, uh, about um, uh, 32 inches. And then the smaller ones, which are 18s, side to side next to me here. Then uh, the other instrument that is necessary is pretty much the timekeeper of the ensemble, which is ensemble which is called a shimmy daiko. Shimmy daiko is high pitched and usually, like I said, keeps time throughout the given piece. A uh, typical piece might have a swing feel like this. And so I can talk briefly about the stroke first thing um, and how to hold the sticks. Uh, the sticks are called bachi which basically means stick. And bachi are fairly large. They raise in size uh, in terms of length, but they're, they're a larger stick. You don't want to use drum sticks or, or a thinner stick. You want something with a little more girth. And it's held untraditionally like, you know how you would normally hold with a fulcrum and then wrap your fingers around. It's held more like as if you were, you know, about to swing a club at somebody. And that's just the nature of the instrument, the nature of the style. And uh, that's really what gives it its character. So you can see right away, the stroke is very upstroke oriented. So if I'm just playing, I'm really trying to make that a visual entity instead of this. And really what that does is it affects not only the visual side of things, but it affects the sound of it as well, the tone that's produced and the feel. Uh, so, a typical pattern may be something like this. You may be familiar with this. That's a, a, a call for a piece called uh, Rhythm Spiritual, uh, and it's, it's, it's known all across the world. Marimba Spiritual, excuse me. And it's something that's, that's, you know, a call that's used a lot, but you can even see with that, instead of playing it... To be very upstroke oriented, more visual. So that brings me to my next point, and I'm going to play this on the lower drum. There's a lot of contrary motion in taiko drumming. As one hand goes down, the other pops up. This is something that not all of us do instinctively because we're so used to uh, hitting the drum and stopping it. But that's one thing you can really start out with is is a basic stroke called don. And uh, I'm going to sing it without playing it. It goes like this. Dome, 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 dome. If you were starting a basic taiko ensemble, you could do something like that, and it would look like this when you played the drum. And you're noticing I'm popping up. I'm trying to define where I'm pointing. Right away, I want to establish that kind of visual entity instead of just getting this. You know, because this isn't going to look good. So the lines are very, very clear. And not only the lines, but the timing. Being able to go from point A to point B. And do it in a visual manner that looks good. Then you increase to eighth notes like this. Right? Dome, 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 dome. Next part. 16th note oriented, you can say doro suko, doro suko, doro suko, don don. Okay? Uh, those three parts together go like this. Now, right away, it's, it's very, very important. 
important that you establish a stance. Much like karate, you know, there's a stance. If there's no stance, then the opponent is weak. Uh, and that's the same way taiko is. So a lot of it is left foot forward, right foot back. In this particular style where I'm playing the drum flat, I'm upright, my body posture is upright. If, if students are bending over, just hitting the drum, it's really not something that is desirable. Nor does it look good when you have, you know, 20 of them doing it. Uh, so that's with this style of drum. Then, on the other side of me, we have two drums on either side of me here. And I could open up my stance, which I'm just spreading my legs, and I'm going to kind of get down more as if I was in, in more of a martial arts position. This is a great thing because you could do things like this, where you can draw visual lines this way and visual lines like this way. So I could take the same exercise and do it both ways, like this. about this is it's teaching movement and timing with movement. As you watch, I'm thrusting forward and I'm thrusting backward. It'd be even easier if I take this drum away to see my legs. So I'm thrusting forward like this. And then I'm bringing it back over my shoulders. You can do the same thing over here. And so that's another way. Once you mount the drum a different way, basically, if you watch all the Japanese taiko ensembles that, that are out there, they have various drums mounted in different ways because they create different visual lines. Very, very important. If I have somebody back here doing this, it's going to be very different than boom, ding, boom, ding. So, something like this. what I'm doing on the rests. Uh, they vocalize a lot. When I say they, the, the, the art form, the Japanese art form, vocalize, you'll hear stuff like ho on, on rest, something like this. Ho! And they come back with a vocalization. Ho! 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 The vocalization is just as much part of the music as the drumming. And it is just as much part of the music as the visual entity. So they all go together. I just happen to have both of these drums mounted this way just to kind of show you the balance side to side. If they were higher, they would develop a different visual line. It's up to you. You can create stands to create any kind of visual line. The more the visual lines you have, the better. Or you could have everybody doing the same thing. Do you need to go out and buy, you know, $3,000 Tyco drums, $5,000 Tyco drums? Not necessarily. Um, I've seen lots of people do things with trash cans, where they'll just take rubber-made trash cans, put some kind of fabric from Walmart around it, um, and you know, cut out part of the bottom so that there's a sound hole of some sort, and you get a low Tyco sound. It's the movement, the energy, and the lines, the visual lines that are created that really make Tyco drumming exciting. Um, I've got some videos of some type of stuff that I've done in the past on my, on my page, but you know, go on YouTube and see what you can find. It's a really a, a, a wonderful way just to teach a world music concept, but also motion, control of the body and timing, and um, something different than just your typical stylistic approach to playing simple things like those quarter notes I was showing you. Timing for ups and downs, you know, being able to do that. And then body control how to really control one's body while drumming. This is something I love doing with younger kids because a lot of them don't necessarily get an opportunity to do that. So uh, this is just a little introduction, things you could do with taiko drumming. I'll be putting up more things, follow-up videos, and if you have any questions specifically about taiko drumming, please feel free to email me. Thank you very much, and as always, thanks for watching.